Hi, one of my favorite YouTube channels is Minute Physics run by Henry Reich. He does these awesome, like very short, not one minute, uh, but very short uh, physics uh, tutorial explanation videos, uh, typically animated like this, and they're absolutely fantastic. It's one of the few channels uh, that I watch every single video uh, from the subscription feed from. And so I'm a huge fan. But I got an email alert last night, and from the thumbnail of the video and the title, I knew exactly what this one was about, and I feel compelled to respond. And there's just a couple of things here which I think really need addressing and the public need to be made aware of that I don't think Henry actually uh, covered in his video here. Now, what it is, is he's basically done a sponsored video. So he's accepted money to produce this video from a company called uh, Rayton Solar. They manu they've got this new uh, process technology for manufacturing solar cells and they've got a uh, an equity crowdfunding campaign. It's not Kickstarter or Indiegogo or anything like that. It's actually equity crowdfunding, which is a different thing. And they've already raised $7 million of a $50 million goal. And they've basically paid him, sponsored him to do this uh, physics, a uh, very cool physics explanation video of how their technology works, which is uh, great. The video in itself is great. And the technology is very cool about how you can use a basically a particle, in an ion particle accelerator to produce really ultra thin solar cells. So it really fits in with his uh, channel of cool physics and uh, science explanations. No worries whatsoever. And Minute Physics have actually been doing uh, quite a few sponsored videos recently. I haven't had a problem with them. I'm a full-time content uh, YouTube producer as well, have been for over six years, and I understand the need to actually, uh, you know, raise, to make a living from this thing, either through sponsorship or advertising or merchandise or brand deals or whatever it is to uh, stay afloat. I'm a huge supporter of content producers and I'm a huge supporter of Minute Physics. So I've had no problems with uh, his sponsored videos uh, recently, but this one, I have a bit of a question with. So rather than just uh, promoting a product or a brand or a, uh, some educational thing or, or whatever, which I have no problems with, this is actually essentially promoting uh, investment in an equity crowdfunding campaign and one which I think is actually very, very risky as I'll go into. And sure enough, at the end of the video, uh, Henry uh, rightly has a disclaimer and I'll, we'll just quickly run through that. The company that's trying to use the particle accelerator technology I talked about in this video to make solar cells on a commercial scale, this company is called Rayton Solar. This is a challenging and expensive endeavor and they're looking for investors, so they sponsored this video to get the word out. StartEngine.com slash startup slash Rayton dash solar. I'm not going to make any endorsement, I mean I'm neither an investment expert nor a solar industry expert, but I do believe strongly that we need both political and technological solutions to secure our planet's energy future, so I'm happy to help Rayton reach a broader audience to help give them a chance for this clever idea to succeed. And I'm making a small investment myself. Hopefully they'll end up being one of the many, many pieces that come together to provide a civilized, long-term future for humanity on Earth. And that's it. And great. Um, excellent. Thank you for the disclaimer. And I'm all for that. I am definitely not anti-technology, anti-science, any anti-innovation, any of that uh, sort of stuff. And I, as I've uh, talked about in my previous video on this, I've actually, uh, like, I thought, I think this is cool tech, and I think that they're, uh, you know, really doing some nice stuff. But uh, Henry said that he's not endorsing this. But unfortunately, just the act of taking this sponsored video, ma making this video, and saying that he's an investor himself. It's effectively an implied endorsement by doing this video. I'm sorry, that's just, you know, it, it essentially is. And by the way, they've got, uh, when he shot this video, it was only $5.3 million uh, that they have raised, and now they're up to $7.2 million. So I can only presume that is a result of Henry's videos. People who have rushed in and invested almost $2 million on the back of this, unless they've got marketing uh, somewhere else. So while I'm all for promoting uh, cool tech, research, investment, all that sort of stuff, you've got to remember this is not a university doing this or something like that. This is a commercial 
uh, entity with patents trying to raise $50 million uh, to actually produce these solar cells. So it is a commercial endorsement, effectively what he's doing there, even though he says he's not endorsing it just by doing the video. I think he effectively is, unfortunately. Now, this isn't the first time that the company has actually used a big name to actually uh, help uh, fund and promote equity crowdfunding campaign here. Uh, they actually got uh, Bill Nye, the science guy, to actually do some promotional videos for them. This was like actually nine months ago. It came on my radar uh, a couple of months ago and I actually shot a second channel video. It was on EEV Blog 2. It's 17 minutes long, which I'll actually link at the end of this video, hence why this video is so long. And it goes through my initial reaction to the Bill Nye promotion of this. So they've actually got very clever marketing to get a reputable guy like Bill Nye to actually promote them. And now they've got Henry from Minute Physics, who potentially, uh, you know, like they've got two sides of the audience. They've got Bill Nye who might appeal to your uh, less uh, techie type people and then you've got the followers of Minute Physics who are, you know, uh, clued up people interested in physics and other cool tech. Um, so they're really, they're marketing. Hats off to the marketing from Rayton Solar. They really know what they're doing. So I'll append that 17 minute video at the end of this, but here's the TLDL uh, takeaway summary for this. Now, uh, Rayton Solar makes some very specific uh, claims, so we'll look at that very briefly and then look at the uh, risk involved. So one of their first claims is that when you uh, wafer saw a regular silicon ingot to produce regular uh, solar cells, uh, they you actually have a lot of loss, uh, which is called kerf loss. And that is true. It's, you actually waste about 50% of the silicon just sawing it. You have like, a, say, 150 microns of silicon, then 150 micron with saw, and then it just gets you know, destroyed into dust. So there is a lot of waste there. So they are very correct that uh, that is a thing. But the thing that uh, you have not been told is that uh, this kerf loss or the cost of the actual silicon uh, used in solar cells is only about, you can see the dark uh, bar down there, that is the actual silicon cost involved in producing the solar cell module itself, and which is about 15 to 20% of the cost. So they've actually made a <clears throat> specific claim here that they are 60% cheaper. I presume this is going to be modules. So that just does not tally up. How can you have a 60% reduction in cost uh, of a module, which they seem to be implying, when the silicon cost, which is the only problem that they're actually solving here, is only uh, 15 to 20% of the manufacturing cost of a solar panel. It does not add up. And the next claim is about the efficiency. They claim uh, their solar panels have the potential potential to uh, achieve 24% efficiency versus 19% of typical efficiency of current uh, production solar cells. And this is roughly true. I will uh, explain further on in the video, but some of the uh, better panels on the market now are approaching that 24% figure, like 22%, things like that. So they're getting all the time. Well, they actually claim 25% uh, more efficient uh, overall than regular solar panels with uh, a, an actual efficiency of 24% in the panel. So your regular uh, commercial solar panels are pretty much catching up on the efficiency there. So I'll kind of, uh, you know, like I'll still give it to them. I'll say, okay, they might be 10, 20% more efficient than current production panels. No worries. So although they have a patent granted on this uh, technology and they claim to have exclusive use and all sorts of stuff, what they don't tell you is this is not new technology and there are many other competitors including uh, publicly funded research, which I cover uh, further on in my video, where uh, doing a similar sort of thing, trying to so solve the same problem that 50% uh, kerf loss in the uh, silicon, the raw silicon manufacture uh, stage. So the marketing sounds really good on this and th they might be the only players in the market, but they're not, not by a long shot. And there's many other different process technologies that can achieve the same sort of result without the high cost uh, ion uh, particle accelerator that they're planning to use here. Just be aware of that. Now, the next thing is that 
engineers like me are really easy to uh, convince. Just show us the data. That's it. One thing you won't find on the uh, Rayton Solar website is anything, any data whatsoever. I cover, they've done, manufactured a little, small little uh, prototype further in the video, but there's absolutely no data. It is almost exclusively marketing with all your regular infographics and everything else. And when there's no data, you've got to be really wary of stuff like this. So there's actually a third claim here, a um, hundred times less silicon than the next competitor. Yeah, fine, great, but that's built into the 60% less expensive to manufacture claim, which I think is not uh, valid. So I don't understand that at all. And the rest of it is talking about market, uh, you know, potential and all the usual uh, infographic uh, type stuff that goes along to any investment campaign like this. But one thing you won't find on here is data. Hmm, I don't know. If anyone can find it, please tell me down below. Now, the last thing is the risk in this. Uh, just general uh, startup technology like this runs at, you know, like sub 10% or even a few percent success rate. So right off the bat, when you invest in equity in a startup, it's already inherently risky. But let's actually look at the Security and Exchange Commission's disclosure of the rate on solar thing. This is effectively the fine print of what you're investing uh, here. And if we actually go down, it, it is very, very explicit in the risks here, and they are huge. Have a listen. First up, they've been running at a loss, but hey, that's not unusual for a startup company like this. So yeah, no worries. Now I'll post the link down below and you can read this for yourself. I won't bore you with the details, but what this uh, is basically saying is that the auditor of the uh, company's accounts, which you have to have when you uh, equity crowdfund like this, is that they have a going concern opinion on its financial statement saying that they are basically reliant upon getting this investment, otherwise they're at risk of simply going bankrupt and out of business. And this here is an absolute huge red flag. I'll read this. If the company cannot raise sufficient funds, it will not succeed or will require significant additional capital infusions. Rayton Solar is offering common stock in the amount of up to $50 million in this offering, but may sell much less, currently $7 million. After $7 million is raised, presumably they've already done that by the looks of it, the following $3 million will go to selling security holders. Even if the maximum amount is raised, so even if they raise their $50 million, uh, the company is likely to need additional funds in the future in order to grow, and if it cannot raise those funds for whatever reason, including reasons outside the company's control, of course, such as another significant downturn, blah, 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 it may not survive. This is the opinion of the auditor for this thing, even if they get their $50 million. Um, if the company does not sell all of its common stock it is offering, it will have to find other sources of funding in order to develop its business. So if they don't get the $50 million, they're not, they have to find somebody else to invest. Otherwise, those people who've already invested into this equity crowdfunding campaign have basically lost their money because they'll go out of business. And right here it says they will actually need $35 million to create a 54 megawatt that they need to actually start their manufacturing facility. So right off the bat there, it's $35 million or bust. And this amount does not include uh, the money required to actually manufacture the PV modules for sale. So... Wow, this is a high stakes game. And then I'll leave you to read all the rest about all the regular stuff outside of their control. They're an early stage startup company, so you know their technology is not actually proven yet on any sort of scale that makes it uh, commercially viable. They're dependent upon uh, this uh, particular particle accelerator, which they're having delivered uh, this year, I believe. They've already ordered it um, and it's on its way. So uh, developing new products, encounters, and anyway, there's all sorts of uh, stuff which is all fully disclosed here and it's very very frank about uh, the huge risks involved in this thing and that's my main reason for doing this video because um, this is now being promoted by Bill Nye the science guy and also Minute Physics to uh, their uh, Minute Physics's four million uh, subscribers it's like a huge market and really they haven't linked in the risk I know all this uh, risk security exchange commission stuff is actually linked on the website, it's all part of the investment. Please read our offer circling. So it's all disclosed, but 
I'm just afraid that people will, you know, take a Minute Physics's video as like an endorsement and not really do the due diligence research and you can't really blame people for not going in and reading all the details in here and that's my fear I just wanted to uh, make people aware that there are huge risks in investing in a company and technology like this so anyway I won't go into any more details I've got another 17 minutes I'll append my original video right now and you can watch that thing that was my initial reaction to the Bill Nye the science guy promotion and nothing much has really changed since no real data has come forth it's easy to convince guys like me, just really show me the data. And that would help me feel, uh, you know, more warm and fuzzy about this particular thing. But I can't help personally thinking that this is one of the most riskiest investments uh, that I've seen in the uh, tech space. But this is not a university research. This is not publicly funded research. This is a commercial company, patent protected company, trying to raise $50 million through equity crowdfunding so there you go I just wanted to make people aware of that and wow have they really raised two million bucks since Henry made that video I think it worked that was a wise investment on their part anyway it's $500 minimum investment by the way and yeah I wouldn't touch this which a barge pole personally but that's just me do your own research so basically while this sounds like cool science and it is the actual prospects for this are not terrific. I mean, they're talking about, you know, a, a small improvement in efficiency, perhaps that may or may not be there down the track. And by their own best case marketing estimates, a 60% reduction in module cost, which I don't think they can get anywhere near because they're only solving that one problem with the silicon wafer. That's it. And that's only like 15 odd percent, which takes it down of the module cost, which takes it down to sub 10% of the uh, module cost, which is nothing groundbreaking at all. So yeah, this is not revolutionary stuff, but still cool science. So there you go. I hoped I helped out some people there uh, with some information. And as I said, I'll link in the 17 minute video with more details at the end of this um, because I am a huge supporter of uh, solar power, renewable energy, all that sort of stuff. I've got a whole link in a whole bunch of uh, solar uh, power, solar energy videos I've done at the end of this video if you want to uh, check those out. So please don't say I'm anti-science, anti-innovation, all that sort of stuff. I'm definitely not. I just think people need to be aware of what sort of investment um, that's actually being promoted here. And it essentially is being promoted by default of Henry actually doing this video, um, and which I'm fully supportive of him actually doing this. If you know, he's obviously passionate. It fits his channel. Everything's just fine and dandy. The content was great. Um, and if he wants to uh, do this, that's fine. I fully support him. It's not like I'm going to stop watching and rage quit or uh, something like that. I just, you know, see this as a commercial investment promotion and. I'm just trying to put some uh, facts across there. But I want to know what you guys think about this. Do you think Henry maybe made a mistake from posting this video? Maybe did he cross some sort of line for you in promoting, is it a, an effective promotion of a uh, commercial investment uh, type thing? Or do you have no problems with it whatsoever? Um, I really want to know what you think. So leave it in the comments down below. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up because that always helps a lot. And here comes the uh, 17 minute video I originally done. Nothing much has really changed since then, except they've got Henry to promote it as well as Bill Nye the science guy. Anyway, catch you next time. Okay, I was going to link in the whole video, but I realized that uh, a lot of the stuff I just go over again that I've already explained in this 17 minute video is supposed to be shorter. So I've really edited this uh, down. And if you want to watch the full video I did a couple of months back, I'll link it in. It's over on the EV Blog 2 channel. So this one's really edited for brevity. Somebody on the EV Blog forum was complaining, nah, what is this? It smells a bit... <laughs> you know, BSE. Um, well, let's, uh, let's check it out, shall we? Thing. So they've raised three, almost $3.2 million of their goal of $50 million. So 2,344 investors 
um, have so far contributed at least $500. You've got to contribute $500. So, hey, good on them, right? They're raising money and they've recruited none other than Bill Nye, the science guy. And take it away, Bill. Let's extol the virtues of this wonderful new manufacturing technology. We can convert sunlight into electricity with a couple of thin silicon wafers in a sandwich. <laughs> a very thin one. For decades, to get a thin piece of pure silicon, oh, we had to saw it off a thick piece of pure silicon. Yep. The saw turns a lot of that silicon into dust. This process Big is waste. fine for making yep. integrated circuit chips for computers or smartphones because the amount of silicon used is so small. But for manufacturing big solar panels out in the wide open spaces, yeah, big green it costs a lot to waste a lot of pure silicon. The gang at Rayton Solar has They're come up with a way to chip off an extraordinarily thin piece of pure silicon, Three not with a saw, that, but with a really subatomic particle accelerator, an atom smasher. Well, it doesn't smash atoms as such. It doesn't smash it atoms. It smashes protons into the atoms of beam. a chunk of silicon. Now, technicians can control the depth to which these particles penetrate with precision, so they can place the particles perfectly. And once the particles are perfectly in place, Rayton Tongue gives the right them angle. a nudge using a little bit of heat it of just the right three magnitude, microns and thick. a perfect this super awesome, thin slice right? of pure silicon is set free. A little bit of pure silicon goes a yep. long way. Sounds great. So Rayton, that'll do. Anyway. So what they're, uh, what they're doing, which is really cool, I like the idea, right? The concept is really good. There is a lot of waste in silicon uh, wafers. We'll have a look at some um, other, some data on that in a minute. Now, first of all, this is not their first attempt at actually raising money for this thing. They've been going uh, for quite some time. Back in uh, 2014, I think it was, 2014, 2015, they ran an Indiegogo campaign. Unfortunately, they only raised five grand of their $50,000 flexible goal. I'm not sure what they were going to produce with their uh, $50,000, but now they're talking about they're so th uh, thin that they're flexible and everything else. Okay, fine, but that doesn't seem to be there. Um, maybe they've like changed their focus. Maybe it used to be like uh, uh, like flexible solar cells. Now they're just uh, you know concerned with like mass producing and uh, commercial and residential rooftop solar cells, just cheaper, which is fantastic. And you know, look, stock images of particle accelerators and everything else. Once again, like Uncle Sam, Uncle Sam, yes. Why on earth? Why have that? On your web, like on your Indiegogo campaign, like American Jobs. I, okay, fine. <laughs> anyway, ridiculous. Um, so they didn't raise that. So now, but they've raised, now raising serious capital, right? 3.1 million. They're on their way to their uh, 50 million bucks. So is it true that uh, we waste a lot of these silicon ingots uh, for manufacturing um, solar cells? Well, uh, well, actual silicon wafers, which then go into solar cells? Yes, it is. There's, you know, articles over here and, uh, you know, raw material 50%, over 50% uh, is machined into dust and stuff like that. So yes, it's true. There's a lot of wastage or what's called uh, kerf loss in this ingot manufacturing when you slice the silicon wafers off. So, you know, have they come up with some new whiz bang technology to do this? Well, yes, but they're not the only ones working on this. Of course, every man and his dog working on silicon uh, wafer manufacturer for solar cell production. There's many companies around the world are continually researching and optimizing new ways. Here's back in 2015, an article in uh, physics.org or whatever it is um, on the Fraunhofer Institute, which are coming up with a new way to actually produce an ingot to do this. And if you go over, um, here it is. The, there's their press release for it uh, back in uh, 2015. You know, yeah, they're trying to solve exactly the same problem. They're not the only ones to do this. And the way they're going to do it, uh, you're going to read all the details for yourself, is to, to basically uh, produce ingots in a different way instead of you know, using your regular silicon chip pure ingots and stuff like that, just manufacture them differently. And here's another company called Applied Materials. This is a um, ARPA uh, thing. So this is a government initiative and they're working to actually do exactly 
the same thing. And like two seconds, Google search just turned up this sort of stuff. Um, so they've got that they got a five million dollar government grant by for, from ARPA. So sixty percent cheaper panels. Well, they're getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper every year. So yeah, you've got to stay ahead of the curve there. But hey. We'll just take them at face value there, even though they've provided no evidence for this 60% cheaper. Where they've got that number from, we just don't know. Now, efficiency, um, they claim to have the potential to achieve a 24% efficiency versus a 19% high-level single-cell efficiency rate. Well, let's go and have a look at current solar panels. So the data is fairly new from manufacturers, and they 19, yeah, okay, the bulk is going to maybe... We'll, we'll take them at that value, 19. But manufacturers like Panasonic and SunPower, for example, they are up to 21, 22% efficiency already. So, you know, as the march of technology continues every year, they're just getting more efficient for a lower price. But hey, we'll, we'll give them that. We'll, we'll pay that one that typically 19% at the moment. Go to 24%, there's your 25% uh more efficient so yeah their number is you know spot on but once again where is their data where i don't see any data whatsoever to back this up um i don't see any test results i don't see any performance curves efficiency curves i don't see any measurements at all in any of this and like if you go into updates there's just some update about uh we're gonna buy the you know here's a, an accelerator we're about to buy one if we get enough cash Please join G'day, me, Andrew. Solar, as we change Please the way join the world us. Gets its energy. We're going to change the world, blah, blah, blah. And check this out. If we go over to their YouTube channel, there is some bizarre mix of what, like, how to get along with your extended family at Thanksgiving, um, how to do a facial mask. What? What? What what's going on here? Mixed in with we've got our accelerator on the way. Uh, oil versus solar, and I uh, like and his Bill Nye back ten months ago he did this apparently uh, presents and there's some beauty tips and like mixed in. Anyway, there is one. The only demo they've got is this, which is their solar cell demo. It looks like they've embedded a solar cell in a condom, and they've um that's the little so they've produced one little wafer but like where's the measurements okay it might be three microns thick like no show me the data all right i'm not convinced unless we get the data they're all talk they're all hype they're all marketing and they might have a cool uh, a pattern on a cool idea but that doesn't turn into practical reality they've gone into startup mode right tried to and they did an unsuccessful indiegogo that was a complete flop and then they went aha we can do equity crowdfunding we'll pay bill we'll fork up the money i don't know where they got the money from i don't know how much it costs uh, to get bill nye on here but yeah we get bill nye and it'll go viral on facebook because it's bill nye and, and it, great marketing hats off right they've uh, done a, <laughs> a really good marketing job but that seems to be all they have and there's other companies there's at least two i found and i could probably find I'd be surprised if I couldn't find half a dozen working on ways to uh, reduce the loss in silicon wafers. Um, because, hey, if you're wasting, what is it, 60%, they said, of the cost, uh, menu, reduce the cost by 60% just by eliminating the waste, there's companies working on that. That's what they do. They eliminate waste and inefficiency in their processes to produce more viable products. So this, without any data, without showing that it's manufacturable at scale, at cost to get this, they have provide no evidence where they're going to get their cost reduction uh, from in actual manufacturing terms. And there's like, they've manufactured one little silicon cell in a condom. Um, so, I, yeah, I don't know, fl flapping around in the breeze there. It's not a scam. Okay, they're just, yeah, marketing over substance. Uh, you've got to look in the details before you invest in something like this because to your average punter, to Joe Average on the street, this is, it sounds fantastic. I'm going to invest in solar cell technology of the future. And yeah, good luck to them. Um, they've already raised 2.8 million in initial funding. So maybe that's where that's what went to Bill Nye. So uh, perhaps not all of it, of course. Huge risk in this one. I just don't see any data to back it up. Lots of fancy infographics. Um, that's if in, infographic central. I mean, it's just as seen on all the usual crap, right? I don't know. 
good good luck to you guys. You look like, you know, it, no, it's not a scam at all. They've just got an interesting idea that may or may not turn out to be practical. So best of luck. But if you're going to invest in this, do your own research.